Good morning, folks. I'll begin by reading the last post to QuakeWatch.net. Two coronal holes in a row have favored rare location seismicity over large magnitude. However, this is likely to change by the end of the week as Jupiter opposes the Sun. I posted that yesterday morning when I woke up before I even tried to compile yesterday's news. Everything said that the calm before the storm was over. In fact, it was more than just the primary geocentric quake maker of Jupiter, Earth, and Sun, but a full moon eclipse occurs at the same time, which hasn't happened with Zeus in attendance in centuries. And all the while, we're coming off the strongest heliospheric alignment of Venus, Mercury, and Sun. Two biggest alignments for our solar system, eight days apart, were in the middle. Beyond that, there was a lone, gorgeous heliospheric disruption that began longitudinally coupling with Earth about a day and a half earlier. The weak coronal hole having departed left this compact transequatorial opening to directly face Earth, and as it did, boom. Sumatra, Indonesia, takes a magnitude 7.8, which may indeed have been as big as 8.2. Luckily, there was no tsunami, which you know if you followed our bajillion updates on Twitter yesterday. Never tweeted so much in my life, and I hope to never spend that much time on social media ever again. It is worth noting, however, that before yesterday's warnings, our previous post to Twitter was a joint space weather and earthquake alert that focused partially on that exact area. Sumatra. Those who follow closely know OLR means outgoing long wave radiation anomaly gradients, and from February 28th when I made that alert to even now at the latest update, that gradient between positive and negative straddles the seismic zone. If you'll remember that the departing corona hole stream is weak, so we're not shocked that the quaking was below average when it faced Earth. However, this one faced Earth yesterday, so it will be very interesting to watch for either a major speed surge or phi angle twisting as the stream from yesterday's corona hole hits us this weekend. We didn't used to have to wait for the solar wind to hit us. I used to have these two charts to judge corona hole power. But after this one on the left took our percentage over 95, they shut it off in July. And when we did the same with the chart on the right, they shut it off at the end of January. NASA, NOAA, GONG, NSO, there are lives at risk. I don't care which one you bring back. Just do it. And folks, even with our best tools taken away, I think you should all be starting to see what's really going on here. We didn't even need Kong Pop's factors to know Sumatra was going to rock and roll. But when we have them, it's going to be one of the best advancements in seismic reaction in the history of the world. As I said yesterday, we are on the verge of being able to afford the best developers on the planet. Join the team, guys. Entry to the founding members club ends in six days. Oh yeah, this is a space weather show, so 193 angstroms here at spaceweathernews.com shows a deceptively calm star. Just the invisible IMF from that corona hole streaming directly out at us. No flashes, no filament destabilizations, and not much far side activity either. The solar flaring remains extremely low as the Earth facing quiet is toying with some new spots incoming. They've got size and beta magnetism, but unfortunately not together. We'll keep watching for flare potential. Top news articles today are obviously going to involve that quake. If you were watching yesterday, I bet you could feel my frustration with the officials and the buoy websites. Turns out there really was a problem with the buoys, and we weren't crazy when we noted the lack of coverage for the area, which is right next to the disturbance under the ocean. Little tip for Michael J. there. How about the California carbon monoxide fears? Well, I'm happy to report that those who agreed that these could be false readings hit the nail on the noggin. I had no reason to doubt it at the time other than they were absurd and would literally have been killing people. But now that we know that that didn't happen and we know the readings are indeed an error. Gatherer 314 posted links to the official data and a NASA press release I have rechecked that data myself. Not real. Weather Channel with two top stories describing the pattern change coming soon. Jet stream changes are going to drive cold air and major snowstorms in the west while bringing record warmth to the east. The jet stream will dip in the west, shift north in the east, and that will allow the air to funnel into those areas, drive the pattern change. Lastly, folks, this is just kind of cool. One of the observers is doing a video game and wanted to promote our community within it. I think that is super cool. Observers in a video game. Got it linked for you below in case you want to click around. 
I would indeed urge the awareness and support of the Disaster Prediction app. We just eclipsed the Mobile Observatory project yesterday, and with six days left, I really think we can get to 75 and bring in the big guns to dominate this application and really begin saving lives. If you've been watching, you already know the score. If you're new here, ask around about the coronal holes, planets, our OLR analysis from November when we forecast located eight big quakes in a row. Just ask around. This community truly means the world to so many people. Yesterday's events, the Disaster Prediction app, and the daily showing on these videos is proof the observers aren't going anywhere. Pressure and radar here, atmospheric layers to come followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.30 a.m. in the Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.